Okay. Well, hello everyone. I'm glad you could join us. Um, my name is Linda Vickers and I have with me um, a special guest. Her name is Marvel Katz. And we just want to um, share coffee with you and just a, a drop in for a visit. So Marvel, thanks so much for, for joining me today. Um, it's, it's my pleasure. I'm so glad to be here, Linda. I'm so glad we met. It's, it's been really interesting. Um, Marvel lives in Canada like I do. So it's a fellow mm -hmm. Canadian. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and where is it that you do live? Just so you can share with everyone. I live in the, um, in British Columbia. So in the Vancouver area, close to the ocean. It's beautiful. Lots of mountains. Lots of mountains and beautiful flowers. Love spring, love fall. It's just a beautiful place to live. I'm very blessed. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's a it is a beautiful province. It is. Yeah. yeah. Manitoba is too, just in a different way. Where I'm on yeah. the I'm in the prairies, so it's pretty flat. <laughs> yeah. Pretty flat. Yeah. But do you get beautiful sunsets, sunrises? Yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we yeah. do have a. Um, I think there's there's they say there's ten thousand lakes here. Lots, wow. Lots and lots of if. There's always a lake to go to. I think there's probably maybe 10 just around my city that people really? go to camp. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's mm. lots and lots of lakes here. Mm. So, yep. Beautiful. Yep. Yep. Good. So Marvel, um, I've heard a bit of your story, but would you like to share with, with the, the rest? Yes. Um, this is a, it's actually a very hard story. Okay. Um, but I felt uh, the Lord laid it on my heart that I need to start sharing it, if nothing else, to help others um, to be aware and to find tools to help their child. Um, um, we, my husband and I, we have, we always say we have five kids. Um, we always take in extra kids all the time. Um, and so um, I have my background in early childhood education. We've worked with hundreds of kids, my husband and I, and um, as we were raising our children, we thought we were giving them a great childhood. We did, you know, all the fun stuff, took them to Disneyland. We did um, camping and uh, sports and all kinds of activities, the church. Um, and I was a stay-at-home mom. I worked from mm -hmm. home. Um, and so I was always around my kids and attentive. I I thought I was doing a great job and I think I was, but I missed something when, when, um, our daughter was 16, she, uh, she let me know that she had been sexually abused as a child and that, that would have been devastating to find it, out. It was totally devastating. It, yeah. our whole world just came crashing down. And, um, as a mom, I, I beat myself up. I'll just be honest. I beat myself up because I had no idea. I well, had, I had no idea that and, this was happening. Yeah, and as a mom, you're the you're the protective. Exactly. And, and you were at home. Um, I was and, at home. I yeah. was raising my kids at home, and um, you know, like I said, I worked from home, so I was always with them. Um, and so, um, now often this is know, someone we, that we know when yeah they you know I mean I've I've been learning a lot since that time my daughter's now a young adult she's uh, 25 years old and so you know kind of looking back from now this perspective from where I am now I'm seeing the signs that I didn't see before I'm seeing you know I'm learning and I've since taken training and um so that I understand the signs but no, what, what kind of training would that have been? Um, well, there's an organization in Canada. It's actually in Edmonton, Alberta, but um, they accept people from all over the world. Um, and it's called uh, Little Warriors. And okay. so they, they actually offer free training for adults to, uh, to know what the signs are, what to look for for young children and they also work with um with children that have been sexually abused so they give them uh counseling and they offer counseling to families so when can, we when we reached we, online 
Yes, yes. So it's the Be Brave Ranch. Be Brave Ranch. Um, I'll go into that a little bit more because okay. I've created a website to help families and, and parents. Um, okay. And I've put in there some of the organizations that uh, we've worked with personally, or we we are we know personally. Okay, great. Um, just to kind of give wrap around. So when we found out about our daughter, of course you have to you have to do all the protocol. It has to be reported, and it's I found it very um, concrete. Like you're going into concrete buildings, you're going to the police station, you have to you know be interviewed. My daughter had to be interviewed. She's 16 years old. We've never done anything like this before and it's it's very um it's very concrete and and then you know um just uh from there where do you go from there so we found counseling for my daughter but I had nowhere to go and you know my husband and I were totally devastated um and so I had a few friends I could talk to about this and they would grieve with me but but I'm like, there has to be resources. There has to be something. So um, I went through Freedom Session, which is another organization that um, I do the advertising on my website for Freedom Session. Went through Freedom Session and was able to unpack a lot of that. But it, but my daughter's still hurting. Mm -hmm. My family's still hurting. We're still broken, right? Um, so more recently. Um, you know, I was, I was trying to, you know, make a mark in this world, do something that's helpful, that's, that's actually, um, you know, like bread and butter, it, it can actually make a difference. And I felt like the Lord really laid down my heart to write a children's story, because it happened to my daughter when she was very young. And okay. I also have my own history as well. Um, that started when I was very young, I never talked about it, it just was not something that I ever talked about and I and thought how why is it right why is it that we as adults um if if this has happened in our lives we we don't talk about it yeah. it's silent yeah and so how is that silence going to help these young kids because it's happening all the time now um I'm sure your audience is from around the world in the states and Europe and so on but in Canada you think Canada's a fairly safe place to raise your kids it's a great place to raise kids but they the statistics in Canada are one in three girls one that, in three girls that's, and one in six boys yeah that's have been that's sexually gorgeous. abused it, yeah. it's it's horrifying it's horrifying yeah. so what can we do what can we do to bring that number down like what can we do what where can we go so that we're actually, um, you know, I, it's too late. I say it's too late to go back. I can't give my daughter her childhood back, but I'm hoping that the strategies that I'm using now are giving her permission to experience healing. But our desire, my daughter and I, we joined forces together um, to to kind of create some strategies to help parents and to help teachers and and because it starts so young well and, and, grand, some, and grandparents too and grandparents any caring adult that if you care about a child and you want to give them a safeguard or you want to be that safe person that they they can come to with anything right mm -hmm. that's we want to create a safe place for these young kids. Maybe they're even pre-verbal. But um, so we, again, we um, wrote a children's book um, about a little mouse. And the little mouse is kind of looking for a safe person to talk to. And, um, and then starts to gently tell their story. Um, that things happen that they that made them feel really bad inside. And um, it's a story that is written for a caring adult to read to a child and create that safe space so that, um, and there's, you know, there's um, little breathing exercises in there. So it's it's got some therapy element to it as well. And then just gentle questions, just gentle questions that the adult can ask the child and just give them that safe space. They feel like they can talk about it. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So Ch children would think it's, it's never happened to anybody else, or they might even think it's a normal thing. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Uh, you know, um, so it, it's really a tool. It's a tool to help the child and um, uh, to be able to speak up and then get the help. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I'm encouraging parents, if you have preschoolers and, you know, it's a book that's appropriate for as young as two, because the adult is reading it to the child. So as young as two, and, you know, um, I've read it to an eight-year-old child and um, her response to it, it's very interesting because she just was filled with so much empathy for this little mouse. She was Aww. filled with empathy. So it's not it's not a harsh story. It's a very gentle story, but it it's a tool. It's a tool in the hands of a caring adult to be able to um, uh, reach the heart of a child. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the situation brings so much shame and guilt yeah. Yeah. and, and your story would be um, just um, not covering it, but revealing it as yeah. Uh, yeah, just a, just a, a tool to heal. That yeah, that for sure. They haven't done anything wrong, right? And right. And, and giving them their voice back. Do you have your book with you? I do. I'm so I glad do. you do. Because <laughs> the, the there that, we go. Tiny, is it backwards? It might no, be backwards. no, it's okay. No, it's, it's called good. Tiny Tiny Finds His Whisper, which is so um, it's so good because as a as a person who's been hurt, then you feel like you don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. And a mouse is like quiet and tiny and, right. and insignificant, right? So right. that's that's such a good analogy of of how a person would feel. And actually, even, right. even a lot of women who have been um, molested or raped mm -hmm. or assaulted in some way, they would possibly get healing from reading that book as well. And it's very true what you're saying. And I'll just share um, when I was um, when I was writing this book, I was doing the brainstorming for it. And um, I found a few pictures to kind of go along to kind of guide the story. And I showed it to my daughter, who was 24 at the time. And I said to her, um, just read it and tell me what you think. And so she was reading the expanded version that the brain brainstorming yeah and she came back and she says I don't like the mouse and I thought oh. yeah I was a little surprised and I was like well if you could be an animal what kind of animal would you be what would best describe you and she thought she's like I think a porcupine and I, I was like okay you know that that's what she thinks she goes no no, she says, I, I think I would be a hedgehog, pokey on the outside, but soft on the middle. And I thought, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. Um, and so I had to go and pick kids up from the school. So I said to her, while I'm gone, um, how about you write your story? And she was like, hmm. So I was gone about an hour and I came back and she was so elated. She was so excited. And she says, mom. I wrote my story and I, I was shocked, <laughs> but she had breakthroughs. She yeah. had breakthroughs as an adult, as a young adult, she was having breakthroughs as a result of reading this story. And so um, she's been working on her story, um, but it's very, it's very difficult. Um, as women, I think we internalize sexual abuse. We internalize it and it feels intimate. Mm -hmm. It feels intimate. It, it reaches so many different levels. Like it's not just physical, but it's emotional and spiritual, mental. It, it, it gets us in every corner. So it feels intimate, but she is writing her story. And the most amazing thing in this story here is that she did all the illustrations for me. And that, that and it, would have been so healing for her too, right? Yes. Yes. So yeah. healing. You know, some of them, some of the pictures were very hard for her. She had a really hard time uh, with the emotions, but she, she kept going and kept going. And, and so we produced this, this book together and um, we're actually 
um, her hedgehog story. She's done some of the artwork for that. And okay. it's, but she's not ready to release it. She's not yep. quite there yet um, because we're in a healing journey. We, I mean, you know, this is, this is very challenging, but we're up for the challenge. So now we've started on a book um, about boundaries. We're teaching the kids about boundaries. So using um, a story kind of from my background and um, to teach children um, kind of to problem solve and okay. find solutions um, when it feels impossible. It feels you know, the other person is not respecting their boundaries. And so what, how to overcome it. So anyways, like I said, it's, it's been an exciting journey. It's been so exciting seeing my daughter just flourish to come out of this place of, of darkness and feeling um, trapped and um, suffocated and to now see her blossoming and you know when I look back at the um um you know what were some of the signs of her abuse that I missed out on one is childhood anxiety and we're seeing increases in childhood anxiety but I'm saying if you have a child that has anxiety just do a check-in check in with your child make sure just rule it out rule it out that your child's not been sexually abused mm -hmm. um and just having that that gentle conversation with them where they feel safe with you and they can talk to you about you know whatever is happening in their life I thought I was already doing all that but I missed I missed the cues I missed them well, and anxiety, so. like you said, it's 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 prevalent in kids right now. It's really increased yeah. in kids right yeah. now. Um, certainly, the last couple of years has has raised the anxiety level for a lot of people. Um, yes, for sure. But and, you know, and there's there's all kinds of reasons for that. But this is certainly mm -hmm. and any kind of fear, because uh, anxiety yeah. comes out of fear. Yes, and you know, with the with the stats, um, you know, one out of three girls or one out of six boys. Um, and if your child has anxiety, my goodness, just rule it out, rule it out. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as, you know, for sexual abuse, they say that 95% of the cases, they never get reported. So those so, numbers are even higher than likely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. And, and as a society, we've really, we've really sexualized everything. It's, mm -hmm. it's every, every ad on TV. It's the cartoons. It's the clothing yeah oh it's every yes <laughs> yes it's everywhere you know yes I um I had a friend that was walking her eight-year-old child to the park uh this just a couple weeks ago and they passed a girl that was 10 and she had um practice safe sex written on her sweatshirt and she's walking by herself in middle of suburbia and and you know my friend was like Oh my goodness, you know, and her eight year old says, Mom, what is practice safe sex? What does that mean? You know, so our, our kids are exposed to it, you know, um, even in kindergarten and grade one in the school system, they are learning about the differences of boys and girls. And um, I mean, I don't know if it's the same in Manitoba, but in BC, you can look up BC government uh, educators, or whatever, and um, BC Ministry of Education, and you can see what the learning outcomes are for each of the grades and um, what the expectations are for the, the children, for their understanding. So, you know, if, so especially would, for would, Christian would, families, Christian families in particular, you know, we think our kids are isolated. We don't, we, you know, we think this is never going to happen in my home. This is never going to happen to my child. Yeah. And yeah, it happened in my home. And I, I was home with my kids. Yeah. So what are, what are they teaching them in school? Um, well, I know for kindergarten and grade one, they're uh, just the baseline is the differences between boys and girls. Um, but, you know, I have uh, a friend who's um, child learned about sexual intercourse and the reproductive system in kindergarten and grade one and 
um, the principal of that school, um, the mom didn't know this. She was just being a good mom, sending her kids to school. And the principal of the school was, you know, progressive in their thinking and just said, oh, you teach the kids everything. And then whatever they don't absorb, it just kind of rolls off like a water off a duck's back. But this, this, um, this friend of mine, her, her son was learning about intercourse and he was curious. And so he brought it home and he's practicing on his younger siblings. Right. And then her daughter goes to school and, and she's learning about it. And now she's in kindergarten. She thinks she's going to get pregnant. So all that anxiety that this little girl was carrying around with her yeah. and her mom couldn't figure out why she was so anxious, you know? So it's very real. It's very, very real. And at the very minimum, um, I'm asking parents and caregivers and grandparents take the training, take the training. It's a three hour training. You get a certificate at the end of it. Um, and again, this is through, you can go onto my website and you can find the different organizations that I'm working with um, that are offering support to not just to the child, but to the family as well, uh, because you're, the family's going through crisis. This is, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, sexual abuse is, uh, it is crisis. It, it affects everybody. Yes, it does. In the, in the home. Yeah. 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 And the siblings too. Um, yes. So if so statistically, if it's happening to one sibling, is there a higher percentage that it's happening to another? Like, does, um, do you know what I mean? Is it going right through this, the family or is it just one or? It, it can be, it can be one. It can be somebody else. You know, children are easily scared into not talking. Yes. Um, I, I can tell you that, um, you know, my daughter was sexually abused and and her younger brother, unfortunately, breaks my heart. He, he was witness to it. You no, know, and he never talked. Never, I didn't find out. I didn't find out till about five years ago that it's affected him as well. So he saw what was going on and didn't know what was happening and didn't know what to do about it. Well, he didn't, he didn't tell, you know, they're, they're scared. They're little kids. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, my my daughter, she told me that she didn't want to tell me what was happening because she was trying to protect me. And I'm like, yeah. you know, in the mind of a child, what I'm the mom, I am your I'm your protector. I'm your guardian. That's my job. That's my burden to carry. Not not a little three, four, five year old. That's not that's not her burden to carry and to carry it. You know, she didn't tell me till she was 16. So all those years she suffered by herself in silence and and the shame and the, you know, it's devastating. It's devastating. Um, you know, I was interviewed uh, about a month ago and um, that the person interviewing me says, well, tell me about, tell me about, you know, how you were raising your kids, you know, before you found this out. And I, and I was stumped because this is such, um, this is trauma. This is trauma. And, oh, completely. Yeah. You know, so to try and remember back to when my kids were little and the, everything that we used to do, I, I haven't thought about that for years because this has been um, so devastating, right? Like, um, but I also know self-blame and, and, you know, just, staying in that rut doesn't help anybody. So that's why my daughter and I have decided to start speaking into this and produce these books and um, give a voice to a child because it, you want um, you want to um, open this up so that this stops. You need to stop yeah. it. You need to be aware of it, put an end to it and um, and um, help help children find their voice like I don't I don't want to see any other child out there suffering for years and years and years or you know like me I, I kept it a secret for 50 years 50 years and I'm still scared to talk about it because yeah. I, I feel like I'm breaking some unwritten 
some unwritten rule somewhere. And, and, and you aren't to blame, but the, the shame goes so deep that we yes. don't know what to do with it. Yes. Right. And so it's been very interesting again, uh, with this book, um, that the people that are actually contacting me, there's a lot of women that are our age that are sending me, you know, direct message or personal message and, and just saying, I'm so glad you're sharing this story because that happened to me. I'm that, sure. that happened to me. And I, and I'm thinking, where does this book go? Like I, we wrote it for young children, but the impact that it's had, I've seen the fruit of this book with my daughter the breakthroughs mm -hmm. and and you know and then these these women that are our age they're they're telling me there's their secret it opens up a door for them to be able to say it's happened to me yeah it's happened to me and how many women I mean <laughs> there's millions there millions there is unfortunately yeah. there is but yeah uh, um we are going to uh, be able to be healed through your book. A lot of a lot of women will mm -hmm. will receive healing just in reading it. Um, yes, it, the the kids by hearing it, um, yeah. and you know, yeah. reading it too, um, giving a voice to people who haven't had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I I had actually talked to a man who walked in on his little son, who mm. was being assaulted. And, and he, he unfortunately saw it as being early experimentation. He didn't recognize mm. what he was seeing. Right. So um, that, that was unfortunate. Either, either mm. way, it was bad. Um, but he misinterpreted it. Right. You know, right. And, the, and that can happen too. Um, but certainly For sure. it, we need, the book will be opening a conversation and yes. we, we don't think of it as, like with, with our sons and grandsons and, and men as often either. Um, but according to the stats, you're just saying it, it's, it's prevalent mm -hmm. there too. Mm -hmm. I am willing to read the story to you. If your audience would benefit from me reading it. Um, and I'll just say that we are translating this book into other languages. So we've done it in um, Spanish. It is available on Amazon. These books are all available on Amazon. Okay. And uh, we're currently getting it translated into Portuguese. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. that's awesome. So. Yeah, I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that, that's good. okay. Yeah. Oh, and just, just before you start, um, I will be, when I, when I do post the, um, um, interview i'll be putting the all the links there perfect yeah thank you that's awesome all right tiny finds his whisper this is dedicated to children everywhere and the message to the reader at the front is this book is intended to be read aloud by a caring adult to the child some readers may find this content triggering due to past trauma mm -hmm. we strongly recommend the free trauma-informed training that is available from little warriors at the back of the book or on our website. So I don't know if you can see it, but I'll turn my... Yeah, that's better. Yep. There we go, that's better? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, my name is Tiny. I am a mouse. I am very little, and when I speak, it is only with a whisper. I like playing with my friends and going on adventures. I like running through the grass and smelling the flowers. I like eating cookies with a cup of cold milk. Yum, yum. I like climbing trees and playing in the dirt. I like listening to my music and hearing birds chirping at the park. I like playing with my toys and building with my blocks. But most of all, I like to play hide and seek. You see, I'm a good hider and sometimes I get afraid and lonely too. I pretend I am invisible. Sometimes I disappear under my covers with my favorite toy or hide under the table where no one can see me. I am very shy and quiet. My voice is only a whisper. I know others are busy 
and they don't have the time to slow down and notice that I have something important to say. I've been keeping a secret that makes my tummy feel bad. I don't know who will listen and my secret makes me feel so small. Sometimes I cry and nobody hears me. A big mouse has told me to keep my secret to myself or I might get hurt if I tell someone else. The big mouse told me to trust him. He said mommy would be mad if she ever found out. I don't like the secret and the mean way Big Mouse teases me. I don't like it when he tickles me and won't let me go. When others are around, they think we're having fun, but I can't breathe and I feel mad and alone. Sometimes when no one is around, the Big Mouse plays games with me. He wants to kiss me and touch me. I want him to stop, but he doesn't listen. Sometimes the big mouse is kind, but then he is mean. I know in my heart that what he is doing is wrong. I wish it would stop, but my voice is too little. I hide in my closet so nobody can see the tears that are falling off my cheeks. My tummy feels all twisted and my head is all spinny. I wish I was bigger and stronger so I could say no. I need to find someone who can be strong for me. Do you know someone who could listen to me? Will you be my friend and help me? Maybe you can bend down low and I can whisper ever so slow. My eyes might get teary and my voice might crackle up, but I will try my hardest to be big and strong. I will find courage and stand up for myself. You seem so kind and I feel safe with you. You can make me feel big. Can I snuggle up with my blanket and hide my eyes? It helps make it not hurt so much. I want to tell you my story. I think I'm brave enough to whisper a little louder and let my voice be heard. I don't feel so scared and I know you will be a friend and a champion who will listen to me. And in the center here is where we have just some little breathing exercises for the children just to help them to uh, stay calm. Can you tell me how Tiny is feeling about sharing his story? Do you think Tiny still feels afraid? Do you think Big Mouse is right that mommy will be mad? Who do you think will listen to Tiny whisper his secret? If you had a secret like Tiny just said that hurt you a lot, who would you whisper to to get you some help? Would you trust me to be there for you if you felt forgot? You are loved no matter what. No secret is too big to keep it stored in your heart. I will listen and I will be here for you and you can know that you will be heard. I care for you, my little one and I'll be right here for you. When you are ready to whisper your secret, please do. You are a treasure and very special too. It's not your secret to carry, it's much too heavy for you. I sure am proud of the courage that Tiny did find. I am proud of how he used his whisper despite being scared. He stepped out of hiding so we could help. He has become so strong and so brave. We love you, little mouse. And then at the back, I just have the uh, links to our website and one of the organizations that we're working with. That's really, so it's just a sweet really little well done, story. Marvel. Yeah, thank you thank for sharing. You. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's a sweet little story that's very appropriate. And uh, just to create that safe space for, for a little child that yeah, not scared, not threatening, not threatening at all. No, 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 that's mm -hmm. good. Well, I really appreciate you sharing the story with us and your story and you being brave enough to mm -hmm. be able to share your story, which is difficult. 
Um, yeah, but you. there's always, there's healing in the writing and, yes. and there'd be healing in the reading because you have yes. given a voice to so many. And in, in that, um, you're inspiring others to share their story. Mm, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So that just, that just really fits with the, the whole, um, the, the meaning of, of what this, this group is all about that we can inspire others with our stories. And that's exactly what you've done here. So I'm so excited. That's beautiful. That, that Thank you, you. You had this opportunity to, 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 and the courage to write it. So. Yes. Yeah, for sure. It, it takes tremendous care, courage to open up and let others into those, those really, uh, could say closet areas, those little areas in our life that we just kind of brush over and, hope it goes away but yeah. it yeah they're, they're they're tender parts of our heart so mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. well thanks so much for sharing marvel um i really appreciate that and and your time here so if um if people are interested and i'm really hoping that that uh you'll get some book sales maybe some invites for um podcasts or speaking that or, sounds great. or something uh, right that, that yeah because this this is um, this is unfortunately something mm -hmm. that, that we are dealing with um, as mm -hmm. a society and not just any country um, mm -hmm. and not just men or women, it's both. Yeah. So um, it is something that we need to work through and heal from. Um, yes, yes. So the information will be uh, available and I hope I hope to hear her back from you that, that you've got lots of feedback so thank you okay. so much for joining us thank you so much for having it having me it's just been a pleasure yes yeah we'll, we'll talk again soon thanks a lot marvel okay thanks linda okay god bless you thank you